And fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. In the holy name of Jesus. We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Whatever you fear, love, and trust more than God becomes your God. We struggle to put our fear, love, and trust where it actually belongs. We're often taken captive by unreasonable fear or misplaced love or duplicitous trust. As Calvin remarked, the human heart is an idol factory. We handcraft our idols out of anything and everything in order to worship, serve, and look to them instead of God for our every need. Some of our idols are quite beautiful, and we think them worthy of our earthly love. But despite all the love you show for these idols, they are dead gods, and they give you no love in return. Some idols we think are dependable, worthy of our trust. But these dead gods are liars, and they lead you from the truth. And today, some idols are quite terrifying, and we think are actually worthy of our fear. Yes, some idols are despicable, full of ugly accusations and threats of violence, and we think them worthy of our fear. These idols that we fear are those who we think will hurt or harm us. And it's true that these gods that we've established in our hearts, these enemies left undefeated, will drive us into fear or more than that, fearful panic. And the fear of them will change our behavior to serve their desires. will change our speech to avoid drawing attention to ourselves or insulting these gods. We'll give ourselves emotionally to them, capitulate to their demands. And in so doing, offering fear to our idols, we live in a perpetual state of fear of these enemies. Now, the scriptures actually define the three chief enemy idols of those mortal enemies of every Christian. There is the devil, of course, the world, and, of course, there is death. So with the devil, he seeks to overthrow the Christian with his lying and murderous ways. As Peter describes him as a roaring lion, prowling around, seeking someone to devour. Just like every Christian knows the fruits of the Spirit and is known by them, so you can know the devil by his fruits, that is, his accusations against you and his insults and his lies. He lies because he seeks to undermine the truth, that is, Jesus and your faith in him, and draw you away from Jesus' word and gifts. So he says to you, don't be afraid, be happy, follow me. The deceiver, of course, has an ally in this pagan world, a world full of its charms and its will to power and all of its dangers. So the world, with its charms, makes promises that it cannot keep, promising to you health or great wealth or just happiness. The world baits you with the opportunity to the will to power, to exercise control and domination over others. And the world corrupted by sin wants you to fear it, to fear so-called Mother Nature, and what it can do to you. These threats of disaster that seek then to put you into perpetual worry. Maybe the next hurricane, or for us, tornado, or 
the latest disease and its variants will threaten your well-being. Be afraid. Fear. But of course, the devil in this world's co-conspirator is actually death. Because it's the enemy that you actually fear most of all. Even if you don't acknowledge the devil exists, even if you think this world is mostly harmless, you fear death. And so, Satan in the world will offer you empty promises to avoid death, all the while working in collaboration. Do this thing, inject this drug, practice this behavior, and you'll be safe from dying. Don't be afraid. Just do the thing. So the tools of the liars are not for your good, but rather are hell-bent for your destruction, even at the same time saying that they are for your well-being. The very things they promise that will give you life, ironically, sometimes, cause you the most hurt and harm. But if that tactic doesn't work, the devil and the world will take the opposite tactic. They'll use your fear of death to persuade you to tear down what God has established, to divide the congregation between those who've had the injection and those who don't, or to tear apart your home, or to undermine the good order of the civil estate. Again, always trying to fear death. Death becomes then the boogeyman that the devil, the demons, and all those who have given themselves over to evil. Death is the boogeyman that they will use to manipulate, cajole, mandate, and strong arm you into perpetual fear, a state of terror. You better listen to them and be afraid, or you might die. Fear, love, and trust. These are synonyms for faith. And true faith belongs to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit alone. But why should you trust God? Why love Him with all your heart, soul, and strength? Why trust in Him for everything that you need for your body and life? What has God the Son, Jesus, given to you by the Father, working in you by the Spirit, done that distinguishes him from all the idols that your heart may fashion? Isn't he just another dead God? Well, truth be told, Jesus is the only answer to your heart's deceit and your longing to escape fear. Jesus is the only answer to the liar and the lies that this world may tell you. Unlike the devil who can only corrupt, deceive, and destroy, Jesus comes with forgiveness, with the truth, and with life now and eternally. So he overwhelms the liar with, his, with the truth. Unlike the world that can only charm and dominate, Jesus comes with love and humility, and under weakness. He comes to serve. He overthrows all the will to power of this world with his cross. And that means that you don't need to live in perpetual fear of Satan or this world or even of death, especially death, because by his cross, Jesus, the crucified one, has destroyed death. He destroyed death by his death and brought life and immortality to light for you. In Jesus, well, that's the only way to live content. Without that kind of captivating fear or misplaced love or the irrational trust that you might put in idols. The only way to live content is to live in Jesus. Faith in Jesus. But not just any Jesus. Jesus who is risen from the dead. 
That is the eternal truth that matters. It was confirmed by the eyewitness testimony of the apostles and evangelists. It is trustworthy and true, and thus it is your only confidence. Because as Paul reminds us, if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. If Christ is not risen, then your faith is in vain. And if your faith in Jesus is futile, if he is not risen, if he does not live, then you are still in your sins and you are right to be afraid. But now, Christ is risen from the dead, and he has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man, Jesus, also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, and then afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. And then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God to the Father. And he puts an end to the rule, to all rule and all authority and all power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies, all your enemies, under his feet. And the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. 1 Corinthians 15. Because Jesus is risen from the dead, that's exactly what will happen. Jesus, the word of the Father that made the heavens and the earth and you, will cry out on the, la on the last day with a voice of command. Young man, I say to you, arise. And he'll command the dust of the earth to reform you, your bones and sinews and muscles and flesh and blood. And then he'll breathe new life in you by his spirit as he says, Talitha kumi, little girl, arise. He'll stretch himself over you three times. And all the dead in their beds, six feet under, will rise as he gives to them and to all those who believe eternal life. That's the truth. And it's really the only truth that can set aside the things that we fear, and death most of all. Jesus is that truth that answers all the devil's lies that seek to destroy your trust in him. Jesus is the way that avoids the ways of this world that lead only to shame and vice and destruction. And Jesus is the life whose resurrection silences your fear of death. He restores, instead, your fear of God. Not a fear of death and destruction, but a fear of the one who holds the keys to both death and Hades. He renews your trust in him so that you live now and already in the resurrection. And thus you can boldly say, what can Satan, this world, or death do to me who is in Christ Jesus? The answer, nothing. You are already alive now in Jesus and will live with him eternally. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen.